in the name of the living God, creator, redeemer and sustainer. Amen. Amen. So dear friends, may Christ make this our touching place. Good morning everyone, it's wonderful to welcome you again to our sofa services and a particularly warm welcome to anyone who may be joining us for the first time today and that includes my dad Yay. who after a long stint mm. in hospital is finally at home and we hope 
able to connect with our community of worship here this morning. So we say hi, Clive. <laughs> <laughs> I should think he's cringing. <laughs> um, John and I thought it'd be lovely to share with you this morning at the start of our time together a couple of things that we've uh, enjoyed this week yeah, real that blessings. have really lifted us up and uh, filled us with joy, particularly as we're all still on our coronavirus journey and, and everything still feels so uncertain. Um, the first thing we want to tell you about is our trip to the beach. We've taken uh, to hurling ourselves into freezing water uh, every day, usually early in the morning. Uh, a completely mad thing to do, but we, we've convinced ourselves it's doing us good. Mm. Anyway, uh, Tuesday morning off we went uh, down to East Head and um, dived in and the water was very cold. And as we came up and gasped for breath, then looking at us, all beady-eyed and happy, was a seal. Mm. And what was so incredible about the seal, he was very close, probably I would say between five and ten metres at the most away. Uh, but what was amazing was that he decided to have a jolly good look at us <laughs> and stayed for the duration of our swim, uh, head and shoulders up above the water. Every time Jonathan dived under, the seal would dive under too. And it was a really, really remarkable experience of nature and the world that we were so blessed to, to have here. A real connection, wasn't it? Yes, left us both feeling very buzzy and excited. Um, and then second experience that we've had this week um, sort of splits into two little slots, really. I think the first was our time with Bruce in the meditation mm. on Wednesday. If you haven't seen... Wednesday's meditation that has gone, please do watch it because Bruce talks really movingly and uh, um, strongly about our, our connection with the community in Bo and how we can all be helping them in a very real way as they face their own um, battles with coronavirus. Um, and the other thing that um, also happened on a Wednesday that was a wonderful experience for us both was the 24-7 prayer. Mm. Uh, there was actually 48 hours of prayer this time and uh, we teamed up with others on a rotor to keep a vigil of prayer going on over 48 hours. And um, it, it felt a very, very moving and powerful experience. I, I as I, we were in a 10 till midnight slot and as I lit a candle and just got, literally got on my knees in my home, but on my knees with my candle, I felt a very strong link with everyone in our community here and everyone else praying. And it was really tangible and really special and um, has lifted us both this week, mm. hasn't it? Mm. Those things that mm. we've shared in. Yeah, it's been a special week, special mm -hmm. week. Lots of really quite profound connections. Mm. Our special prayer today is not actually the collect. It's a prayer we'd normally say in church after we'd shared in Holy Communion, in the bread and the wine, the, the living presence of Christ. I've chosen it because it just seems to have some very special words and phrases that may, I pray, speak to all of us as we look ahead in this time when we await coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. So let us pray. Living God, giver of love and power, your Son Jesus Christ has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news we proclaim. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So, to our Bible reading this morning, which is a little different. It is. We are not reading the Gospel this morning. The reading this morning comes from the Acts of Apostles, which are accounts of the experiences of the people at the very beginning of the church. And um, we thought we'd read from one of those this morning. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, in this time, when will you restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, 
It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men appeared in white robes and stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. So once again we take a short time of quiet as we reflect on what we've heard, how God's living word has spoken to us. We think of the characters in that amazing story, that story of Jesus' ascension. What it might mean for us. So as Jane said, the Acts of the Apostles offers us accounts of the very first days of the early church. And it's such a wonderful book for us to read. We've been reading it, many of us, through this season of Easter. But Jane, in that story, what, uh, what struck you? What did you hear? I think I need to probably share to start with that I really struggled to get my head round what I just read when John and I were talking about the service this morning and was trying to make sense of it for myself and not not finding that point where I could say oh yes this this I'm here this is what it is until I heard the song that we had playing at the start yeah. of the service this morning which I chose which you chose and it was very <laughs> lovely it was too um and the the song constantly comes back to a touching place and, and refers to through through the lyrics what whatever happens uh, talks about mothers losing children and all the different things that can happen in life but constantly comes back to the touching place and I, I think from this I'm I'm getting the there's heaven and there's earth but in that moment there was a touching place and mm. the only response really when you hit that point is is to enter into prayer because it's very overwhelming and mm. it's difficult to assimilate quite what that means. Mm. Yeah. And we hear of those who will experience that ascension gathering together and devoting themselves in intense prayer as a result of all they've experienced and all that they were awaiting. Mm. Lockdown has uh, given all of us uh, a chance to uh, do things differently 
Um, I am actually remarkably good at DIY. Now, <laughs> of course, uh, I never let on to Jane. I I'm laughing. Put up shelves and things because thirty years in. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> if she knew how good I was, she would have me doing all sorts of things. I would. Uh, but so far, um, we've managed, uh, and the we is because I've had some help. We've managed to fix the washing machine ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've managed to fix the dishwasher I ourselves. I think I did the washing machine. I don't think you did. Um, <laughs> uh, and of course, they, they, they went in the same week, didn't they? The dishwasher, the washing machine. Uh, but my pièce de résistance has been uh, a complete overhaul uh, and service and fixing of our broken petrol lawnmower. Um, so feeling very confident in my um, uh, abilities and not a little bit big-headed, I thought, uh, I'll tell you what I'll do now is, um, we've done the rockery, we're going to drain the pond. I know the pond pump stopped working years ago. I'll take it out and I'll apply my newfound skills to the pond pump. Well, I tell you what, I've taken that pond pump apart this way and that. I've replaced this and the other. And whatever I do with that pond pump, and they're not cheap, I cannot make it work. The connections in that, that pump, uh, well, they defy me. Every time I plug it in, it seems to short out the whole of the house, to rush the fuse box and flick everything up again and get things going. Um, I'm gonna have to give up, I'm afraid, Jane, on the pond pump, and we might need to we might have a look at um, buy a new one. Uh, what, what the cost is for a new yeah. pond pump, because we want our new waterfall to work. It's been a, a bit of a creation. Well, uh, I have to say that uh, working on that pond pump and thinking about ascension uh, did make me think about connections, about what makes some things work, what makes some things tick, how power can come from one source and get to another source, connect, and then things work, things happen. You know, it's easy for us when we hear of the ascension story to maybe think it's actually a, a, an uncoupling a disconnect. Jesus leaves us and goes up and is gone. Yes, we know he sends the Holy Spirit. But I've been reflecting a little bit on the understanding that is maybe more from the Eastern Orthodox Church of what happens at the Ascension. And I think Jane picked up on that in what she said. That, you know, in many churches, you will see, and in our church in Hove, if you remember, in our great east window, at the very top, uh, there were just a, a pair of, 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 of besandled feet at the very pinnacle of the window. Um, and of course, uh, it was a very odd image. I'd love to show it to the kids, uh, particularly when we were preparing them for confirmation, and talk about what it was and see if they could, could work it out for themselves. Of course, they couldn't, and they were done then. We said, well, it's Jesus. He's being lifted up at the ascension and is heading off. And you're just seeing his feet. Ordinary human sandal feet. Well, I think I find a much greater resonance in that sense of actually Jesus does ascend. He is taken up. But in that ascension, that movement, earth is lifted up into heaven. But also in reaching up Christ brings heaven down into earth. A wonderful spiritual writer, uh, Richard Raw, put it like this. The ascension is about the final reunion of what appeared to be separated for a while, earth and heaven, human and divine, matter and spirit. They are again one. And it was important that in those images of the ordinary human feet going up into heaven, that they were just that, ordinary human feet. If Christ is the architect of a full human journey, a complete relationship with the divine, well now, in the story of the ascension, we know how it all resolves in glory. Hold on to that. Hold on to that sense of connection. 
you know, last week we spoke of, of how the Holy Spirit, uh, who Jesus calls the Spirit of Truth, um, is something he is going to gift us with. It's something that we hold within ourselves. And it's also gifted to others. I think that's more significant than we realise. This week I was also um, making my phone calls, as I try to do every week. The ministry team here in Harbour Churches has been given their list of people to call. I've now begun to stray from that list. And uh, I picked up the, uh, the membership role of, of one of our three churches. And I'm going to be honest, it's a church which, over the last year or so, I've begun to feel less connected to. I've sensed they felt less connected to me as their vicar, as their pastor, as their priest. But I thought, you know, I need to, I need to have a go. I need to trust in that love that has been placed in me and the love that is in them and work on that connection. So I opened up the page and I had a look down. And I looked at the names. Now, of course, there are some names on the list of people who we hardly ever see in church, but there were names of regulars. And I'm going to be honest, when I saw those names, I was expecting to feel a sense of, well, not dread exactly, but, oh, what's it going to be like to be in touch with them? But as I looked at every name of those folk, who were such good folk, and sincere in their faith. I had this warming of my heart. It was, if you like, an Emmaus moment. My heart was lifted. And then I, I phoned two of them. And I just, I can't tell you how connected I felt with them. How, again, and this is happening more and more, isn't it, in a time of lockdown, when things are closed off, actually there are ways in which through the Spirit, the Spirit of love placed in each and every one of us, we are discovering ways to open up and to find new connections. We know that's happening in so many areas of our lives. That way in which through what has been gifted to us, we can connect out of that love to the love that is out there in others and I'm convinced that when those two loves connect then that's when we are revealing the fullness of Christ the fullness which we've spoken of in the past as true resurrection but now as we look ahead in this time of ascension to the coming of the Holy Spirit that fullness of our own humanity. There's that wonderful quote from one of the church fathers, the glory of God is a person who is fully human. The glory of God is revealed in a person who is fully human. Those besandled human feet remind us that what we are now in Christ is something so special that we have a share in that fullness of life, that divine life. I hope some of that resonates with you. What I'd like to do now is just end by inviting you to join me if you were in a prayer of ascension commitment commitment to connection. It's a very simple prayer. Let's call it our touching place prayer. Just invite you to say it with me now. Christ Jesus, connect me to that love within 
that I may connect to that love in others. Christ Jesus, connect me to that love within me that I may connect to that love in others. Amen. Amen. And now Jane will lead us in a short time of prayer. As we continue our prayer this morning, open your heart and we invite Holy Spirit to come deeply. To feel the peace of God. Holy Spirit, come. To know the love of God. This morning we pray for the people of Bo in Sierra Leone. We pray for the schools there. We pray for the country. We pray that our call to support them through our financial giving as they face coronavirus is heard. We pray for the leaders of all the countries in the world, particularly those countries that have no infrastructure or healthcare system like we have. We pray that we will find ways to support them and work together not just for the now, but to build a better, fairer future for everybody. We pray for our church community here. For our Archbishop Justin. For Bishop Martin. For Jonathan and all the clergy team. And we pray that as the church itself faces the financial challenges of a drop in income, that we as a community can find ways of financially supporting the work of the church in this place. So that it will continue, not just for the now, but for generations to come. We just take a moment now to pray for those in our community who are known to us, our friends, our family, who are sick at this time. We pray for their healing. We pray for those who are dying. We pray that in their last days here, they will know your love and that they will know your peace. And we pray for those who have died. We lift them to you, Lord. We were asked to pray by name for Derek, for Clive, we pray for Margaret, for Judith, for 
Teresa in her grief. We thank God for the life of Paul. And together we gather up these and all our prayers as we pray in the words that Jesus gave us to say. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, as I said last uh, week, on Pentecost Sunday, we are going to chant our worship arm and we're going to have a go at a Zoom service. Uh, those of you, sadly, who can't connect to Zoom, uh, we're going to record it and we'll put it on the YouTube site as a sofa service. But we're going to be sending out details of how to connect to that uh, Zoom Pentecost service. Uh, you'll I've, find... I've learned to do it recently. Yeah, it's not as yeah. hard as you might think. If uh, I can, <laughs> if I can, uh, So that'll be through our I'll website, details to. on the description of this service on the YouTube channel uh, and also uh, through uh, the news vessel we'll be sending out as well. So we'll try and make sure that you know when uh, or how, I should say, uh, to connect to that invite to have you come and join the, the Zoom service. We're looking forward to it. Uh, we had 30 people joining together to Zoom after 24-7 prayer. Uh, wouldn't it be great if we could get 130 um, for the Zoom service, so I think I should really get a hundred on screen or whatever it is. But never mind. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll test the system. We'll, that way. we'll test the system. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're almost at the end, and uh, before Jonathan does uh, his final blessing, I just want to introduce our last song today. Um, it's Ten Thousand Reasons, which I know is much loved and sung in in all our churches. Um, and as, as I was thinking about our, our themes this morning of connections and bringing everything together, um, I came upon this, which Matt Redman wrote. Um, the song 10,000 Reasons is by Matt Redman. And uh, it, it is a song about reaching out in everyday life to connect to each other and to God. And this is what he says about writing music. There is no one who escapes pain, heartache, confusion, stress. It's not just relevant to people in church. But if you sing honest songs that are raw and real, they will be relevant to people's lives, both inside and outside of the church. Mm. Let's end uh, by saying the grace together. The grace, the grace of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ and the love, love of God and, and the, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be, be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Oh
praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Forever. Oh my soul, oh my soul, worship Him. Worship your holy name. Worship your holy name.